Hi and welcome to the Happy Guy Gin. I'm Nathan and I'm going to be reacting to a video that's been recommended by YouTube for the last week or so. I like to react to things that are Japan related. I travel to Japan so many times that um, I think I have a, a, I'm a good person to react to these things anyway. So the video in question is from Mrs. Eats, a channel that I've watched in the past, but I haven't watched this video. It's a great way for me to also highlight some other content creators that do amazing work. And in this case, Mrs. Eats' video is titled How Foreigners Make Japanese Uncomfortable Unintentionally. And guess what? I am a foreigner. I am a gaijin, which is a Japanese word for foreigner. And um, <laughs> I think that I'm going to be a great person to react to how I potentially could make Japanese uncomfortable. I hang out with so many Japanese people. Let's see what I think of this video. Anyway, let's get started. Something that are normal in your country might be seen as awkward, confusing, or even annoying here in Japan. Okay, absolutely. That is so true. Just because something is, is um, normal where you live, and it's all across the world. You know, in Europe, there are some social norms that might be different in Australia, in Africa, in, in, um, in other parts of the world, USA, etc. So... Yeah, very true. <laughs> and Japan is very unique and very special in, in that respect. So let's see. In America, you say, excuse me. But in Japan, we say, Japan is a country. Okay. <laughs> I mean, like for example, here where I live in, in, in Gibraltar, by the way, I tend to say, when I see somebody, I say bye, <laughs> which is kind of odd. Some people that come to visit, they say, you say bye to people, isn't that a little bit rude? But I say bye <laughs> as people walk by and it's, it can be a little bit odd to some people. So yeah, definitely different, different things for different people. Let's see. Tree full of rules. We have rules for the train, rules for the bus, Very true. rules for Very the office. True. We even have rules for using chopsticks. And yes, there. Wow. Yeah. Um, generally, I think the most important thing that I'm going to say here is that as a foreigner, you do have the gaijin card, the special pass that if you do make a mistake, you're probably not going to be judged. They're just going to think, oh, it's just a tourist. Oh, it's just a foreigner. So don't worry too much about these things. There are certain things that, that you do in Japan that, um, you know, you can do better. But ultimately, it's not your culture and you can only try your best to do the best, if that makes any sense. There's so many rules when you're around other people. But if you don't know these rules, you might be wondering why mm. some Japanese people are trying to avoid you. Trust me, it's not because they are secretly discriminating against you. Or are they? Japanese are... That is true. I think a lot of people sort of have this, this thinking that Japanese people might discriminate against against foreigners sometimes. But ultimately, I mentioned this in one of my other videos recently, ultimately you are, if you're a, a Western looking person, <laughs> you look different to, to a Japanese person, you're just gonna stick out. There's nothing you can do about it. It is what it is. And ultimately, when you're walking, to the, walking down the street and there are a hundred Japanese people and you're the one foreigner, there could be another Japanese person doing something wrong but if you're doing something wrong, you're going to be the one that sticks out, <laughs> basically. It, it's the same all around the world, right? Too polite to share any of these rules with foreigners. It's actually easier to move away from somebody who's making you uncomfortable than telling them directly. And one thing you need to know is Japanese people don't like to be direct. That is very true. <laughs> I can 100% um, say that Japanese people are not, normally not direct. Um, in fact, there's been times where there's been a little bit of, of lost in translation or slight awkwardness when a Japanese person doesn't really want to say no to you, but they, they're not saying no, but they're saying no. <laughs> and it's really confusing at times. <laughs> but yeah, definitely true. Well, except for when they do... Kanjo! Check out our kanjo you- <laughs> What the heck? <laughs> right, I was not expecting that, Mrs. Eats. Thanks for making me laugh. 
Cliver's right. T-shirt and other great merch. So, if Ooh, you merch. don't want to make Japanese uncomfortable, you should avoid these things. Okay, what things? In Japan, we have the word smell harassment or smell harassment. Awesome. <laughs> well, not awesome, but interesting. Perfume harassment. I was really surprised when mm. I saw a poster that explains this type of harassment. But yeah, in fact, uh, one of my friends, she's Japanese and she goes to yoga, and she sent me a photo at one point of a poster that basically said no perfume allowed in the in the um, in the studio. And it is true that um, generally strong scents aren't very, you know, aren't really used in Japan. However, um, it's probably better for a tourist and a foreigner to smell okay rather than to be stinky. Um, so I always say I recommend you take your own deodorant and maybe get something that's neutral, something that's not too, too strong. But um, deodorant in, in um, Japan isn't as effective on Western skin types, in my opinion. And, in, you know, many people say the same thing. Just get something that works well for you and something that's not too strong. And um, in terms of like, like perfumes and colognes, I think there are times where it's okay, but you just need to be careful. In Europe, we might over, overdo it sometimes. <laughs> But when I was in America, I was so, so surprised how many different fragrances there were. When I oh, you'd be surprised in Europe then, dude, because Europe is like cologne and perfume everywhere, all the time. When I went to the mall, I could smell the air freshener, all right. scented yeah. candle smell, etc. Also, I was surprised how strong the deodorant smells in America. I that's really interesting, actually, because a lot of the comments in one of my videos are from Americans that that say, you know, like, no, don't take deodorant from 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 your country. Buy it in Japan because it's very strong. Um, me personally, the the deodorant that I use is very effective, but it's quite neutral and it isn't very very strong. So interesting. Heard that Americans tend to enjoy more complex smell than Japanese people. Almost everyone I met wore some kind of perfume or deodorant. I don't yeah. think I ever met a person in America who had no smell. In Japan, the most popular scent here is no scent. For a lot of Japanese, the biggest reason to wear deodorant is to remove the smell, not cover it up. Yeah, yeah, I, I see that. But at the same time, you know, our pH levels, our body types, I, I believe, I'm not a scientist, are very different. And therefore, you know, we do tend to stink a little bit more. We do tend to sweat a little bit more. And um, that's something that you do need to consider when you're traveling around. I've asked multiple Japanese people about this specific thing. And every single Japanese person has said, dude, it's better for you to smell of something that's relatively nice than for you to stink of body odor. <laughs> so... My suggestion, once again, get something that's neutral, that works for you. Of and course, masks. we have scented deodorants too, but they usually have light smells like mint, lemon, and soap. So the smells aren't so strong. It's more like a refreshing or relaxing. Also, mm. in our society, there are situations where you are supposed to be scentless. Work and school are two of the main places. This might explain why we are so sensitive to these smells. But I think it's the same here, right? I think generally where I live anyway, there are certain scenarios where you're not gonna like cover yourself in a scent, right? And some Japanese people are so sensitive to smell that they don't even wanna be around others who are wearing mm. heavy fragrances. When I but I'm like that myself, you know, sometimes um, there are certain fragrances that are very strong and I'm in the bus and somebody sits near nearby and they have a very strong perfume. Uh, get a little bit sickly so i get it i 100 percent get it i used to work in a hotel vip lounge i had many many requests from japanese guests that they want to switch their seat because the person at the next table was wearing very strong perfume mm. the scent was usually coming from foreign guests and the japanese guests felt surprise, uncomfortable surprise. with the smell of the perfume mm. also in some places in japan there's an unspoken rule not to wear too strong fragrance. Yeah. In high-end sushi or Japanese washoku restaurants where people enjoy delicate flavors, you should be scentless. If There you go, guys. If you're going to go and have some high-end sushi, let's not um, spoil it for the Japanese people. 
just, I mean, there's a difference between, I, it's very difficult for a foreigner to be scentless. That is a problem, I think. <laughs> Someone's wearing too strong fragrance or cologne, it can ruin other customers' experience. Too. I agree, I agree with that. Ooh, a hairy situation. Ooh, interesting. Japanese people see beards as dirty, scary, and aggressive. Scary? Why? The reason is history. Beards were acceptable at some point of Japanese history. It was a okay, symbol okay. of power during 1467 to 1615. In mm -hmm. 1930, when militarism came to Japan, facial hair became a symbol of authority. Afterward, yeah, I've seen plenty of, um, of photos of Japanese people in the past with facial hair. And as a traveler to Japan, I do see a lot of, not, I wouldn't say a lot. Okay, I take that back. I do see Japanese people with facial hair, beards, etc. But definitely it's more common. And um, the majority of people have no facial hair and are clean shaven. World War II, having no facial hair became common. As Japan's economy grew, more men were becoming office workers who wore suits. So a clean face became a symbol of a modern, sophisticated man. That's mm -hmm. why beards aren't seen as a very good thing these days. There have been court cases that employees sue the company because employers ask them to shave if they... I mean, not a big surprise. It happens in schools where, you know, there's been cases of even foreigners who have blonde hair, I believe, if I remember right, being asked to dye their hair dark. Or maybe not foreigners, but maybe Japanese people who have, who have um, lighter brown hair, naturally, are asked to dye their hair dark so that everybody's the same. So this does not surprise me at all. If they didn't, they would have their pay cut or evaluation lowered. The latest case happened in 2019 when wow. two male employees of Osaka Metro complained that they were unfairly evaluated because they did not shave as their supervisors told them to. Ooh. Although they won the case, immediately after the news, the mayor of Osaka tweeted, What's with this ruling? I'm appealing. The old city transportation is a service business. It's wow. unreasonable to say that they don't have to follow the rules. That's, oof, that is probably my biggest reaction. What the heck? when they set the grooming standards and the rules themselves are legal. This is not a private club. It is a public service organization. It is funded by customer fees and the taxes were used to make the subway tunnels. Of course, this kind of incident would never happen in America, right? No way. I was way. really surprised to see how many men had facial hair. Well, Some not, not in Europe anyway. I think every other person has facial hair. You guys here. even make it part of their identity. But can foreigners have facial hair if they work in Japan? Mm. Of course, nobody has a problem with facial hair in public places, like on a train, on okay. a taxi, or in a grocery store. Which... I mean, really, ultimately, you know, genetically, I think I have very strong, like, facial hair. It grows very quickly. I, I shaved this morning, you know, and I'm already sort of like, have the, whatever, the five o'clock um, shadow. Uh, and that is part of the reason I think potentially people in Europe might might um, not shave and and have facial hair. Whereas in Japan, I think generally people are relatively um, have relatively less hair. Maybe I'm assuming. What do you think, guys? Am I assuming? I don't know. In some workplaces, facial hair is definitely okay. ECC is one of the biggest English schools in Japan. This teacher, he is always on the poster. Look, he has a beard. Also, if your work is more artistic, like designer, video game maker, etc., then. Okay, okay, so certain jobs, I guess, certain jobs then. Beards are okay. But I haven't seen foreigners who work. My friend, <laughs> Alan. Japan, Japanichi band Facebook. Check out his Facebook page, by the way. Um, he has a great, amazing beard. I could not imagine him without without Working the beard. In bigger <laughs> Japanese companies with big facial hair. I wonder, maybe they had to shave it so they could work there? I'm not sure. But I can mm. say there are certain positions that require you to shave, like working as a sales rep, hotel staff, or a chef. Recently, however, I don't, personally, I don't see the problem with facial hair. <laughs> like, 
I don't think anybody should tell you what how you should look unless it's dirty unless it's smelly unless it's you know whatever falling off onto people's food I don't think it's anybody's business but I guess this is a cultural thing and this is what happened I'd say more and more especially younger generation people are accepting you know neatly trimmed facial hair you can even buy a beard sticker so Ooh. you can enjoy having a beard look on the weekend or the Ooh, maybe that's what I should do when I go to Japan next time. Buy a beard sticker and wear it. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. Funky. Vacation. Then have clean face when you go back to the office. Ooh. All right. Ja a lack of words. Let's see what, where this is going. Um, <laughs> I don't really know where this is going to go. Japanese people don't usually talk to strangers. But I know it's very different in America. When I took a flight mm. in America, many people were talking with each other. I was surprised because many of them didn't know each other, but were chatting like old friends. Some of them... Yeah, here where I live, like everybody's in everybody's business is kind of normal. I guess it's a Mediterranean sort of thing, south of, 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 of Europe sort of thing. I'm having a conversation with a friend in private and somebody who's sitting at the bus stop next to me might jump in over here and say, you know, jump in and join the conversation. It's kind of common. Even help each other put things in the overhead stretch. I was also shocked to find that when I walked in the store in the US, the, you know, the shopkeeper start talking to me. Hey, and then, you know, have a yeah, chat. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the same me. here, it's the same here. But after getting used to, you know, talking to a stranger, you know, everywhere. Yeah. And when I came back to Japan, I missed it. I realized that, you know, having a small talk with a stranger. Yeah, I guess as a foreigner, you're going to have the problem, the language barrier anyway. So that small talk is going to be very dif different. However, from my experience, there's a lot of small talk when you go to izakayas, bars, you know, that kind of thing in the evening. During the day, I think people are just very busy with their lives and getting to work or working, etc. And something that I've noticed quite quite recently in the past few years is the use of headphones. Um, Japanese people, they, they wear these big headphones sometimes and that they walk and that's, that's sort of like a sign of leave me alone. You know, I'm busy. Don't interrupt me. Or, you know, greeting to each other. Was such a you know pleasant moment to me. Before I got married with Mr. Eats, I was living in New Zealand, crashed for a year and a half. I went to a grocery store by myself and then I bought a bunch of chocolate. So I brought all the chocolate and cookies to the cashier and there was Ooh. the very handsome looking cashier. He's not as handsome as Mr. Eats. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Eats. So he, you know, he would greet me, right? Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? Good, good. Where are you from? I'm from Osaka, Japan. I was so nervous, right? <laughs> I can imagine a Japanese person being nervous um, at the beginning, especially going to places that are a little bit more chatty. Because I have never been, you know, talked by a total stranger. On that note, let me know in the comment section, what is it like in your country? How chatty are you? Is it a general thing? Or is it like, are you just a reserved person who just doesn't talk to people? That's absolutely fine too. But generally, what is it like and where you're from? I'd love to know. When he finished putting all the chocolates in a huge bag, he said, see you later. I, like, I literally translated see you later. to Japanese. I will meet Matane. you later. Okay, so. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, the, the whole, I will meet you later. The whole like literal translation. Now that's a problem. <laughs> He wants to see me later, after his work. <laughs> oh, Should no. I go back to ask him, what time do you finish your work? I didn't oh my to God. go back, so. <laughs> that is funny, Mrs. Eats. That is so funny. I wonder what would have happened um, if you had come back. <laughs> that would have made for an awesome, funny story. I just went, went back to my dormitory. As I told you, for Japanese, being spoken by a stranger or even cashier is such a, such a, such a surprising thing it's not normal for us to talk openly with people we don't know if a stranger talks with us we're yeah. probably thinking why is he or she talking to me yeah i guess you need to read the situation and um, definitely there are there are times when when it's you know you you feel that it's a right opening to um to have a conversation with someone. I mentioned that I take postcards with me and I, I give postcards to people and they're great conversation starters, a postcard from my from my hometown. 
but I wouldn't go up to a stranger in the street and give them a postcard. It would have to be a situation where potentially maybe I'm on a, on a Shinkansen um, train ride for an hour or two or whatever, and somebody sitting with me, you know, next to me for a while, there might be a little bit of a chance for small talk there and maybe the postcard comes out. Or maybe, or probably in an izakaya, in a, in a bar, having a few drinks, you know, usually a little bit more open, people are a bit more open when they, when they drink, you bring out the postcard, you give it to the person and they love it. And the conversation goes, wah. What do they want from me? And <laughs> also some want? Japanese people are very self-conscious about their mm. English skills. So if they are talk in English, mm. they get really nervous and then they be, probably yeah. don't know what to say to you. Yeah, an interesting fact is that um, if you normally, from my experience, if you ask a Japanese person the question, do you speak English? A lot of them will say, no, 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 no. <laughs> Japanese sign for no. <laughs> um, but if you ask them, do you understand English? It's a little bit, it's a slightly different question and they might be a little bit more open and they might actually say a little bit. So there's a difference between understanding and Speaking, I've noticed that question um, gets two very different answers from the same person in Japan. Hi. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry. Of course, there are people in Japan who enjoy small talk with strangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Osaka I agree. is known as a place where people are more friendly. Mm. So if you come here, more people might start chatting with you compared mm -hmm. to other places in Japan. Of course. You I also read somewhere, and I want to try it. Then in Osaka, if you're walking down Osaka and you do like a fake, fake, like um, shooting somebody in the street, they will shoot back at you. I don't know. Is that true? Has anybody ever tried that? Let me know. Younger Japanese people tend to be friendlier to foreigners too. I think it's totally okay to talk to Japanese people when you come here. Mm -hmm. But please do not worry if the conversation doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, definitely don't worry. And even in my case, there's been cases where I've spoken to people and I've had to give up on the conversation because it literally wasn't going anywhere. Their, their English was, or their understanding and their English was so poor. My Japanese was so poor that, um, you know, there's been long pauses of, of silence and, and it's just gone nowhere. Yeah, I agree. Many it's people fine. are just surprised when it does happen. Making direct eye contact is something we don't do in Japan. Maybe you've mm. seen this video where Mr. East talked about a creepy DVD that is supposed to help you with eye contact. That eye contact DVD? That sounds very creepy indeed. Are you looking at me? Look into my eyes. That's because in Japan, we are told that too much eye contact is bad. So mm. when you talk with a Japanese person, they might not make direct eye contact with that is such a cultural different like thing because here anyway where i'm from it's rude if you don't make eye contact and if you don't make eye contact it can be seen as you having a social issue um so yeah that very interesting you but that doesn't mean they are not listening to you instead mm -hmm. we show attentiveness by making sound when we show that we, we are mm -hmm. listening to you we say ah. mm, mm, mm. Eh. Mm, eh. Oh, oh, you might oh, think there are oh. <laughs> too many rules in Japan, but actually following those rules are very, very important in Japan. If you want to succeed and make a good mm -hmm. life here, it's important to understand those different rules. I yeah. met many people who had a hard time dealing with these different kind of rules in Japan and eventually, you know, hated living in Japan. I talk all about I it. I can imagine. I can imagine. I mean, check, check her, her channel out, obviously. She puts out good content and I'm always happy to, to share the video creators that put, put in the effort and have some value that you can get from their videos. In terms of rules, I think the number one rule is always like, do as the locals do if you can, um, follow the rules and read the room or read the space that you're in. If you see, I, I've said this before, in the times of COVID, everybody used to wear masks and people used to ask me, do you wear a mask? And I, my answer was, well, if I'm in an area and nobody's wearing a mask, then I'm not going to wear a mask. But if I'm in an area where everybody's wearing a mask, then I'm going to wear a mask. I don't want to be that, that foreigner. Things have changed now and I don't wear a mask regardless because I think things, things have changed drastically. But um, there are social norms and usually 
looking around and seeing what other people are doing um, can be the best lesson and the best way of doing things in Japan. So, I'm going to leave that video there. I'd love to know your, 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 your comments, your opinions in the comment section. And don't forget that I have my main channel, which is Ninja Monkey, where I put out um, guides, tips, itineraries, and all things for you to help plan your trip to Japan. Make yourself a little bit more confident when traveling to Japan. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Hit the subscribe button. That's what I was trying to do. Stay positive and be a happy gaijin. Bye. <laughs>